All right. Hi, everyone. Sorry, we've been having some technical issues. Um, I thought I had this set up for my laptop, but uh, looks like going to have to go through my phone uh, for this morning. So I'll try to make sure that this is less choppy um, as we go along. But uh, if you're hearing this, if someone could uh, shoot me a text or something and let me know. Oh, I see it. Thumbs up. Excellent. So welcome. Can we stop this, Nathan? All right, thank you. If you have it, bud, go ahead. All right. So once again, I'm Pastor Bill Jones, and uh, thank you for joining us for virtual worship this morning. Um, due to the icy weather outside, we didn't want to risk anyone's health or safety uh, being out on the roads. Um, so like I said, I am sorry for the technical issues that we're getting started a little bit later, uh, but I'm glad that we are able to at least join each other for worship this way. Um, it will be somewhat of an abbreviated service and I've, uh, shanghaied my family into helping out and participating in it. Um, something I've always dreamed of doing is having the whole church join me in my house for worship, and uh, this is the next best thing. So welcome to my home, and thank you for joining me uh, in this. I do have one quick announcement for today. Um, our YF and our confirmation class uh, for today has been canceled due to the, the weather and just concerns over when the temperature drops again and it being wet outside uh, that would be right during those times, so we want to keep things safe. So both of those events have been canceled for today. So uh, without further ado, um, I'm going to invite my wife Pam uh, to start us with our opening prayer. Oops, sorry. O God of all creation, you came into the world that we might know love and new life. Pour your spirit on your church that it may fulfill Christ's command to live the gospel everywhere, that the proclamation of the good news might be heard throughout the earth, and reassure us that we are your beloved people. Defend us against all evil and temptation. Give us grace to bear faithful witness to you. Endue us with love, keep us constant in prayer, and empower us for the service of love. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from Isaiah 43, verses 1 through 7. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead. Since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, whom I formed and made. And our sec second scripture reading for this morning comes from Luke chapter 3, verses 15 to 17, as well as verses 21 to 22. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. 
His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. The Baptism and Genealogy of Jesus When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. All right, so those are our scripture verses for today. Um, Before I move into prayer of illumination and share a message, um, I do want to apologize again for having some technical issues earlier. Um, If... uh, I'm not sure if we're on both of the Facebook pages at the moment. Uh, If anyone has the ability to uh, get in touch with either Steve Dettinger or anyone else and let them know where the page is or just send the link so people can join us, uh, I would greatly appreciate that. Um, But, you know, we're we're making it happen and we're sharing this time of worship with one another uh, today. So would you please join me? in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the ability to gather, even if virtual, for a time of worship and lifting up praise to you. We give you thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ, the light of the world, and the opportunity to celebrate that light today. We give you thanks for the truth of your word the Word inspired and put into a book, and the Word made flesh, uh, who came to be with us, Emmanuel. Lord, we ask your blessing upon the the message today, um, that you inspire us with your love and your truth, um, and that you share with us your, your gospel good news for this morning. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this morning is kind of a a special service. It combines two different celebrations within the church, Uh, the first of which is Epiphany Sunday, Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment, Um, and the second of which is Baptism of the Lord Sunday, Um, and it was my hope that we could do like a reaffirmation of baptism um, this week at Stonepile. Last week, uh, there was the reaffirmation of baptism or remembrance of baptism for Dan Spies at Springvale. So the church there was able to participate in this. Uh, baptism is uh, such an important part of our life and how we come into the church. Uh, so even though we weren't able to do that at Stonepile today, we will try and do that sometime in the future. Um, but let's begin talking about Epiphany. For many cultures around the world, Epiphany is actually the day um, that they receive gifts, whereas many of us celebrate Christmas on the 25th, of December and uh, share gifts and everything, uh, many Latin cultures wait until the 6th of January, uh, commemorating the time that the wise men showed up uh, and brought their gifts to Jesus. Um, Epiphany is also the last day of our Christmas tide or Christmas season. So um, if you haven't taken your decorations down yet, you are good to go for taking your decorations down. This is officially the end of the Christmas season. Since we couldn't get together on Thursday the 6th to celebrate Epiphany, we are doing that this Sunday as we celebrate this time. I found this quote from another pastor that talks a little bit more about Epiphany and wanted to share this with you. It says, Epiphany is about the revealing of the light to the world. Not all see it, of course. This is why Jesus frequently said, let those who have ears to hear, hear. Even we have moments where we aren't so sure that we have seen that light. Yet we who gather for worship have caught a glimpse of something and we come to celebrate and to lean into that hope. What we have come to understand is that we are to be the light, so that others might see in us the light of Christ. 
we might then acknowledge the light we have seen in, in one another and give thanks for that vision in the darkness. See, on Epiphany, we commemorate uh, the wise men coming and finding Jesus. They were guided by a star, a shining light in the sky, but brought to meet the light of the world, which was Jesus Christ. And it was at that time when they got there that they realized just who Jesus was, that Jesus was Emmanuel, God with us, that Jesus was the light of the world. And they gave their gifts to this child, um, to this baby of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, all things that would prepare him for life and ministry and even death on the cross. Um, and this was a very special time, obviously, and it's one that we commemorate uh, each year and should remember because Jesus truly is the light of the world come to be with us. Following this, not long after, about eight days, Jesus was taken to the temple and dedicated in the temple. And it's there that he met Anna and Simeon, who Simeon had been waiting to see him uh, and wanted to uh, see the Savior of the world before he died. And Anna, who spent all of her days in the temple praying, gave her blessing of Jesus as well. So it was interesting for me in taking a look at all the different things for today, Epiphany, uh, Baptism of the Lord, and noticing some very special things like when you have a baby come into your family, what are some of the different celebrations and things that, that take place for you? Typically, there's a baby shower. Uh, and then there's a time where the child is brought to church to be dedicated in the church or even infant baptism uh, in the church. And then if that child doesn't have, uh, or if the child is baptized in, as an infant later in life, they have the opportunity to go through confirmation uh, or to affirm their faith publicly and claim it as their own. Um, if they weren't baptized as a baby, then there's the opportunity for believer's baptism, the time in which they are able to say for themselves, yes, this is my faith. Um, and if you actually take a look at each of these things, it kind of lines up with some of the celebrations that we do. The wise men showing up and bringing gifts? Sounds like a baby shower to me. Uh, Jesus being dedicated in the temple by his parents is that time of dedication. And then Jesus coming before John the Baptist, uh, choosing to be baptized for himself. Um, that is a moment of that believer's baptism or that affirmation of faith, uh, that choice that this is my faith. Now, with Jesus' baptism, there was something very special that took place that I believe takes place in everyone's baptism. And that is the fact that not only did Jesus choose to be baptized, but after he was baptized, God alighted on him. God said that this is my son in whom I am well pleased. You know, and it, in that, God was claiming him as his son. I believe the same thing is true for each and every one of us, that it's through baptism that God claims us as his own, that we are made to be God's. Can I have those scriptures that you guys read? If we take a look at our scriptures for today, there's some very important things that stand out. Um, in the Isaiah passage, it says, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. I think we see that in the baptism of Jesus as well, but it's also something that God continues to promise throughout Scripture, that he has claimed us, that we are his own, and that he wants us to know that, and that is an important part of our life. And those words from God in the baptism of Jesus down at the Jordan River, where God says, You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. I believe that God says the same thing for each and every one of us 
at our baptism as well, that we are his children in whom he is well pleased. Maybe not with who we are or act in our sinful life, but for who we are as created beings of God, that God knows us, that God loves us, that God made us to be good. If you take a look at Psalm 139, um, it states that God made us in the womb of our mothers. He knit us together that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We need to remember that. Now, baptism in the United Methodist Church is about what God does in baptism. There are many people or many different faith traditions where they uh, practice baptism over and over and over again. Um, And in the Methodist Church, we don't practice uh, multiple baptisms. So if you choose to be baptized again, it's not really a re-baptism, it's a remembrance of baptism. Because we believe that God got it right the first time. That God blesses that occasion, whether you're an infant or whether you're a teenager or whether you're an adult, at whatever time that the water is placed on your head or that you are fully submerged, God is present. God has blessed those waters and God has chosen that time to claim you as his own as you are claiming him as your savior. So I know there's been questions about that before, but the one thing in the United Methodist tradition is the opportunity for us to remember our baptism or to reaffirm our baptism with the water. So if that's something you would like to do at some point, please let me know. And that's something that we can share together. The other thing in the United Methodist tradition is we believe it's important for the whole community of faith to gather around to be a part of that. To share in the blessing, to bestow prayer uh, over the the blessing that is taking place. But the other thing is, when we're baptized, we become even more of a community, a part of the community of faith. Uh, So having the church there to dedicate themselves to surrounding this person with their love and their prayers and guiding them in their Christian discipleship is a really important part of the tradition of baptism that we uh, carry on in the church. So these are all really important things. So today we've talked about Epiphany and Jesus coming into the world, the light of the world, that Jesus was Emmanuel, God with us. Very important time for celebration. And we've also talked about baptism of the Lord Sunday and why it was so important for Jesus to be baptized and what is stated within that baptism, the fact that God claims us. It's not just us claiming God. It really is God blessing us and bringing us fully into his presence. And this was a pretty important thing. If you take a look at the Great Commission in Matthew, Jesus tells his disciples to go into all the world and baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Baptism was important, and Jesus wanted that opportunity for all people. Scripture says that it's God's desire that none should perish. So baptizing everyone or giving everyone the opportunity to be blessed by God and brought into the presence of God is a really important thing, and it's part of our mission. As we go into this new year, this 2022, with all that it presents to us, both the good and the bad. Let us remember that we have a God who is the light of the world, a God who loves us so much that he chose to come and be with us, a God that has gone through every measure, every possible thing to make connection with us, a God that no matter what we have done or ever do, chooses to love us, chooses to forgive us and chooses to allow us to become a part of his own, a part of himself. So in remembrance of that, as we go into this year, let's find all the people that we can to baptize and bring into the fold of God. Let us share the light of the world, the good news of Jesus Christ in every possible way that we can. And let us be reminded 
that we are children of God. Those of us that are baptized and brought into the church that have affirmed our faith, we are disciples of Jesus Christ. We are part of the family of God. We are part of the body of Christ. I'm so thankful for the opportunity to be able to serve in at Bethlehem Snowpile and at Spring Valley United Methodist Church. I'm so thankful for this coming new year, for all the different things that we will see God do in and through the ministries of our churches. And I'm looking forward to partnering with each and every one of you as we go on this journey. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Amen. As we begin to close this worship service for this morning, I did want to share with you um, an epiphany prayer. And it is a litany prayer. So when I say the words, Lord, in your mercy, uh, I want you at home to respond, hear our prayer. And there will be an opportunity in the course of this litany prayer uh, to be able to share your own prayer concerns there uh, in your in your household. And I do have some that have come in to me via uh, text and email, and I will share those at that time. But let us join together in this epiphany prayer. In the waters of baptism, we were made God's children and called to serve one another as we have been served by Christ. Therefore, let us pray for one another and for all people who will, who will not or cannot pray for themselves. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise that in your mercy you brought us to baptism and there gave us Jesus' holiness in exchange for our sin and impurity. Thank you for our parents who brought us up in the faith and to baptism. Thank you for those other people whom you use to bring us the gospel. And thank you for our pastors and teachers in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the baptized people of God that we may hang on to your promises in true faith especially when we experience the wilderness of sin and evil within and temptations and trials from outside. Strengthen us with your Holy Spirit so that Jesus' victory may be our victory. Lord, in your mercy. mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all people that the good news of Christ will be proclaimed and heard by all people and that many will believe and be baptized. To this end, send and support pastors, missionaries, teachers, and lay people able to give truthful and loving witness to Christ. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Have mercy on those in need, those who are struggling because of domestic violence and breakdown, those who are suffering from harmful behavior, and hurting relationships. Heal, restore, and renew, dear Lord. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, those who are disabled, those in the hospital, those facing their last moments here on earth. Show them the light of the gospel. Provide helpers and caregivers and medical resources, and heal both body and soul. Be with those among us, who are sick, recovering from surgery, or suffering loss. In particular, as prayers for Matthew, uh, Marianne Fenimore's grandson. I have prayer. I ask prayers for the family of Pat Zellers. Um, her memorial service will be tomorrow at 4:30 p.m. at Springvale. I ask prayers for Agnes Park. I also ask prayers for Judy Kraus, for Kitty Seitz, for Frank Warner. I ask prayers for uh, a friend of the Sparks family who is up from Tennessee and grew up in the York area, who recently lost um, their father, Marvell, and almost lost the, their mother, LaDonna, to the coronavirus. Pray for their whole family. 
I also ask prayers for me as I have a procedure done tomorrow. I now give you the opportunity to lift up any other names uh, that you would like to be shared uh, at this time. So I'll offer this time of silence for you to lift up other names that you would like lifted up. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have shown us your love and salvation in the baptism of your Son. Accept these prayers of your children in the name of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Beloved, once again, thank you for joining us today for this abbreviated time of worship, uh, for this time of celebrating Epiphany and Baptism of the Lord Sunday. Thank you for keeping us warm and safe in our, our homes, but still able to gather for worship. Uh, beloved, I do ask that you be safe today with the icy conditions outside and everything else, that you stay warm and safe in your homes. Um, my hope is that you remember that you are loved by God in incredible ways um, and that our community will never let anything keep us from gathering and worshiping and sharing God's love with one another. With all that said, beloved, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Have a blessed Sunday. I look forward to being with you next Sunday and gathering together in our sanctuaries once again. In the meantime, have a blessed and, um, and prayerful week. Uh, thanks again. Have a wonderful Sunday. I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.